Hey everybody, One Peg here. Uh, got a little bit of a video, right? That's what that's what this is, right? That's this this medium is video. Okay, cool. Just just checking. Anyway, the purpose of today's video is to go over some more gameplay. Uh, I've got a lot of requests from people asking me to continue to do a series on uh, gameplay review which I am more than happy to do. If you enjoy this stuff and it's something that you want to see more of, please continue to make some submissions in the Discord channel, the Review My Gameplay channel, which there will be a link to the Discord in the description and the uh, the pinned comment. All right? Uh, so without further ado, I have a series of clips here that I'm going to uh, review for you all, give you an idea of hopefully what they're thinking, what they're going through, give you an idea of what maybe they could do to do something different, uh, or if the person that they're engaging is trying to or should be doing something different. And we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right? Okay. So this first one is from Lemming Russ, um, who titled this one, Mosin Ling to Chad. Uh, looks like he started off with a Mosin and killed a couple of scavs at the power station on Shoreline. And now he has himself uh, what looks to be like a Vepper 136. Uh, does a little bit more looting. Gets himself a P226. Gets himself a piece of chest armor. Got himself some PS rounds as backup for the uh, the 136. Uh, looks like he does a little bit more looting. All right, we're going up the hill to radar. Oh. Let's back this up just a little bit. So right here, Right here, there's a uh, there's a PMC in this bush right here, with what looks like either an M1 or an SR25 maybe, and he starts lighting Lemming up, and Lemming sees him, closes the gap and gets him. Man, that was lucky. This whole run up here. Like he's fast forwarding through it, but this whole run up here, if you notice, like he's wide open. And one of the things that I always preach is to make some attempt at not running out in the open. So in this case, of course, at the top of the hill, no one can see him until he crests it. But he has this entire lower field to his front and right and back where, you know, he's got 270 degrees of, of visibility on his body right now. Running up here uh, at this point for him is probably a very, very big mistake. But a lot of shoreline is kind of open ground, and it's hard to, to you know move through it. But in this case, where he finally passes this tree, and right there, you have a PMC just waiting in this bush for him to come up, uh, can't, essentially just camping it. Um, thinking that it was, you know, a high travel area, which he's he's pretty right, it is. Or he could have been healing himself. I don't know. Uh, waited for Lemming to get pretty close, and I don't know what he had in the SR twenty five. I would assume since he built it, it would be, um, you know, M eighty at least something like that. But the fact that he missed this poorly makes me wonder whether he had some significant amounts of lag or if. Uh, he just had like a serious frame rate drop or something like that because uh, he really should have had this. This was not a difficult uh, engagement and kill, but Lemming ends up beating him, reloading, healing, probably loots him. Let's see what level was he? Level forty nine. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure what. And there's the SR twenty five. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the the deal was here at all. Um, Lemming should have lost this. There's there's almost no reason why uh, Lemming won this engagement at all other than just it being pure luck. And once the engagement started, I mean, him closing the gap and getting right up in the guy's face was probably the smartest thing he could have done to make sure that he actually got the hits in. But anyway, nice clip. Okay. Um, these next few are from Tower. And this first one is titled Target Transition Drill. So he snipes the guy on the roof. Starts heading down the hill. 
probably to change vantage point just in case he needs to mix it up a little bit. And and if you notice all these names here, he's one of the uh, one of the lead dudes over there at the uh, the Sherpa Hub Discord. They're really really good guys, and they usually have very very good gameplay. So we'll see what happens here. Okay. Jesus. All right. So he engages this first guy. Um, and there isn't really a whole lot to be done here. I mean, as he, as he comes downhill, he kind of ends up right in front of this dude right here. And the only thing he really can do is fire and back up. I think if it were me, I don't know if I would ADS necessarily so that I could keep my momentum. Because what happens in this game is when you aim down your sights, your walking speed becomes like half. If you notice here, instead of his full walking speed, he now has half on the gauge. So he loses 50% of his mobility. For me, I think, uh, in this case, if he had, if I had already seen his elbow up, like he's already got the gun raised to his, to his eye, uh, I think I would be more likely to try to point shoot while moving in reverse just so that I could try and get like a little bit more cover. You see him kind of like start hugging into the rock a little bit, like trying to gain, you know, a little bit of cover on his body as he starts to engage. But then he ends up just kind of taking a knee for extra stability in the shots that he's making. He He takes this guy out. He gets him. But if you notice right here, this guy starts cresting the hill. So now we have a second guy in play. So, And he notices that there's movement here. So on shooting this guy, he starts to transition over to the guy on, on the right. He makes this transition, but the guy that started shooting at him already ducked behind a tree. And now he's taken a bullet impact or two to where now he's got aim punch and blurred vision from the pain and the impact of being hit. Now he realizes at the same time that he's shooting at this guy on the tree, there's a third guy that pops up right up in front of him. And then he runs out of ammo. So, unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot that could be done here. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that it comes at like the, the more like macro levels of gameplay, right? He, he has an unsuppressed weapon. Takes a long-range shot, makes a lot of noise. Moving on from here, after that long-range shot, there's that three-man coming up the hill, closing the gap after that shot goes off 25, 30 yards in front of him. And then he turns and starts sprinting, which at this distance, even in the rain, you're going to be able to hear somebody sprinting footsteps if you have a headset on. So in running down the hill, he more or less just continues to give away where it is that he's located. Had it not been raining, it's very likely that he would have heard these guys coming up the hill toward him because you can hear a couple of footsteps here now. Once he kind of gets close enough to engage them, you can hear them stepping a little. Um, but once he's in this part of, of this clip, it's, it's almost too late. Uh, he did what he could, and he took one with him. And he got that guy on the roof, so, you know, admirable attempt. But I think that the, the moral of this here would be to just kind of slow down your own, your own gameplay a little bit um, to where when you give away your position like that, you don't necessarily kind of go charging off in a different direction. Um, now, I don't have the context with this, so it's very well possible that he didn't come from this direction. He came from, you know, up the side of the hill instead and then engaged and then decided to kind of cut down because he already had known what was behind him when he came up the hill in a different direction. But it's, it's hard to tell without context. In this case, I think it's just a matter of uh, moving, moving too fast. That's all. Okay, this next clip is called Bruh.
Okay, so at the start of the clip, we have a pretty thick guy just kind of running down the hill. Looks like he just got out of resort. Again, this is on shoreline. He takes the shot, and it looks like that right there looks like a spark. So I think he hit him in the helmet. He just didn't finish him off. So he's still alive, and he knows somebody's nearby. Now our player hears him continuing to sprint up, pulls out his pistol, in this case a G18, And unfortunately, in this case, I think this is where the mistake gets made. He ends up revealing himself. And in this case, he, he tries to go for, like, hard center of mass, and he's just kind of all over the place. Yeah, so it looks like he has on, like, a black commando rig, and it he might have, a, like, a slick plate on. And if that's the case, uh, in which I have always preached, is it's better to wear chest-only armor than it is to wear armor that covers the stomach and arms. Because in instances like this, if you have somebody that is like just laying down a ton of fire, uh, if it hits that slick plate carrier, you're being consistently protected from those kill shots. And if they're using something like AP6 and trying to take on that, that slick plate, it's not really going to get through even after a full mag. So, um, and not at that distance because honestly the recoil is pretty uncontrollable. The other piece here is that um, if you notice the pistol, he's using a G18, but there's no stock. So he also has even less recoil control than he would have had had he put like that short little stock on it. So I think, I think honestly, the mistake here, if there was a mistake made, wasn't, wasn't the sniper shot. I mean, the, the shot was on, it hit him in the helmet. It was done from uh, a good cover position. And, you know, like the old meme goes, he had the high ground. The guy that was running down the hill was already suspicious of him. He was looking for him. I think rather than making myself known, I either would have drawn him in a little bit just so that I knew I could at least get a little bit more rounds on target with that high fire rate of a, of a weapon, or I would have let him continue to move past and tried to, I guess, lay still, play it slow. If I was using the G18, I'd want him to be closer just so that I could make sure that those rounds hit. Okay. Um, this one is called Glass OP. So this is another interesting one. Now, I'm, I'm going to take a guess and say that he's using, like, 7N1 or LPS, maybe not necessarily SNB. But in this case, because he's looking down, when he pulls the trigger, he's not in a really bad position. Like, you can see that he's purposefully aiming just a little bit below where he thinks the face of the helmet is, trying to see if he can clip the face hitbox just a little bit and finish the guy off. Let me see if I can slow this down. It doesn't look like I can. So in this case, it, it, hits, it ends up hitting the helmet. And the unfortunate reality is glass, while penetrable, scrubs off a slight amount of damage. So when the round goes through the glass, it scrubs off a little bit of damage. And in hitting that helmet, it ends up absorbing it, causing a ricochet, you know, whatever. It gives the PMC then an opportunity to be able to react. And as Tower tries to finish him off, he ends up kind of missing. This guy can just kind of like weave back and forth without any type of like body momentum continuing to carry them in any way whatsoever which allows them to evade. On one hand, I don't think Tower played this wrong at all. He made a great shot. Uh, and the helmet just wasn't forgiving. On the other hand, I think BSG needs to do something about this inertia mechanic that doesn't exist. And uh, they really need to add something that, uh, that slows down the ability for one of these characters to just, just change direction. Um, because I think it detracts from you know, the, the immersion of the gameplay. I think I gotta, I gotta kill the volume on this one too, unfortunately. So it looks like they're on, they're on second floor of interchange, uh, right near the, uh, the main hallway where, uh, you would typically see Killa, uh, right down the hallway from tech light, the main set of escalators, blah, 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 blah. Looking around. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it looks like he checks down this hallway 
Yeah, he checks down the hallway. There's nobody there. I think this is just bad timing. This is what it looks like. He pulls back up, and there's somebody waiting there for him. Already ADS, waiting for him to come back around the corner. He probably got seen from the side, and then this guy here just kind of stood and wait for him to come back and kind of look in his direction because the moment that he ADSs again, it slows down your movement. So then he sees it like, oh, I have this opportunity. He takes the shot, hits him right in the head, head top of head. And that's all she wrote. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Okay. And this one from Wazy is called Great Spawn. I'm going to assume he got spawn killed, right? Okay, so this this is just a story of your classic thermal boy that spawned the next spawn point over. So Wazy spawns here. This is like the ideal position that you want to have if you're trying to run up to the resort because it's one of the closer spawns because the resort is just right up here. Uh, he decides that he's going for radar. The problem is, is that there's another spawn point right over here on the left, down low. So if you run in from this next spawn point over, the guy that runs in... He gets to run in from, um, you know, kind of like the wall. But if he runs up, he has the ability to go prone right at the top of like a little hill and just kind of like watch this entire run up. When you spawn here, what you want to do is run under the arch and around the other side of it because it cuts off the sight line to the guy that spawned, you know, 100 yards down the uh, down the wall. Right here, there's this nice, long, upward, open corridor. Right? This nice long corridor right here with tons of sight. So he starts heading up and he starts getting shot straight up that ramp. He takes a few hits. He goes prone. And when he goes prone, the guy down here loses sight of where he is off of that ramp. Right? Now, it's also very possible that this dude could have had a thermal. Because with all the vegetation in the way and everything, he's probably looking at, you know, a white glowing body by the way that this played. But then what happens is, is you see Wazy, instead of continuing on the trajectory he was on, he ends up turning a 180 and running backward. And when he runs backward, he ends up actually pushing himself back into the line of sight of that guy looking up that big old earthy ramp. You want to run under this archway and then run up and around instead of going up this way. Because you give somebody that nice, big, long line of sight when you run straight up like that. Okay. This one is from Ravioli. This one is titled Sturman Go Wacky. Oh. hell was that? <laughs> uh, oh, I saw it. I saw it. So there's two things here. There's one is desync. One of them, one of the issues here is desync. And the other one is uh, a, a, just a, just a dumb move. So if you look real close, you're going to see a scav. Right here in this uh, this warehouse doorway. Oh, here, I'll turn the volume down so that's not annoying. So he jumps to try and see if he can get vision on this doorway, which is a common PvP move in, in other shooters. <laughs> Players typically don't have the reflexes to be able to, or aim that quickly to be able to drop you if you're going to take like a little jump peek like that. Now, you really give away your position when you do this, but he took a sh he took a gamble and he lost. In this case, you have a scav that then suddenly realizes that they have a line of sight on a, a character model that they can shoot at. And thanks to the beauty of scav vision, he takes his 101 hunter and and takes a shot while he's in the middle of yelling at his chest. And then when the shot goes off, because of the way netcode and interp works, 
to the server and its view of this player, he's still, you know, up here in the air somewhere, maybe a quarter to a half a second behind this. So at the point in time that he actually jumped in the air, when that jump began is when the scav saw him. And then while he was in the air, that scav took a shot. On his screen, he's already back down on the ground. The scav takes that shot, and instead of hitting him in the chest, he hits him in the head because the scav was aiming center mass, and then the player's body fell into the trajectory of the bullet that went out and hit him like head eyes, head top of head, something like that, and finished him off. So again, just unlucky gameplay. Don't jump to check doorways. Um, sorry, you got clapped by an overzealous AI. I, I don't know what else to say there. Get, get behind trees and check things slower than that. Okay, and here we have um, another clip submission. I'm not really sure what's going on here. It looks like uh, somebody in labs. Um, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. Here we go. This is, this is some of the best gameplay I've I think I've ever seen, uh, in in Tarkov ever, ever. Um, we have we have clearly a very very well established, uh, well seasoned veteran player of the game. That has chosen a very tactical location to wait out his opponent right down to the wire even uh really getting into like that nail biting time and through just sheer determination force of will and an ability to stay as silent as possible is able to get the drop on not one but two PMCs And you can see in the face of the player how frustrating and tedious it was to have to wait out the, the other players to get to this location in hopes of getting the drop on them uh, and using an extremely difficult... Difficult gun in that of the AS Val. You can you can hear the the um, the release of frustration and anxiety in his voice as he's able to uh, to finally reap the reward of all of this tedious effort, where he's then able to get a, a 308 MDR and SA58, really really great kits and uh, hopefully be able to carry him uh, to the next phase of, uh, of his clearly, clearly dominant presence in gameplay. Really, really well done. Very commendable effort. Very, very good. So which one of you guys in the comments is writing away about how I'm praising x camping? How many? Come on. Come on. Anyway, fellas, thanks a lot for uh, for checking this out. Hopefully this was as entertaining for you as it was for me. Uh, I enjoy doing this stuff. So uh, if you dig it, uh, please uh, give a follow and uh, sub to the channel maybe and come check me out when I'm live on Twitch every single day starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, if not earlier. Okay? See you soon. Peace. Peace.